Well, I wanna welcome you to 4th of July weekend uh, 2023, man. We are excited about having everybody join us online. Um, and today I wanna to just give you a message from God's word about freedom. I want you to think about freedom because when I think about uh, Independence Day and the 4th of July, we kind of get wrapped up into the fireworks and the festivities, and yet we forget about what it's all about. And I was just thinking about the reminder that we have in New York. I mean, in New York, in the harbor of New York, stands this giant uh, copper statue. Uh, what's it called? It's called the Statue of Liberty. It stands 150 feet tall, mounted on a base that is another 150 feet tall, which makes Lady Liberty 300 feet in the air and then the torch beyond that. And the Statue of Liberty is there to remind us as a gift to the United States of America from France, given in 1876, marking a hundred years since the Declaration of Independence. And the statue was dedicated 10 years later in 1886 and has become a worldwide symbol of freedom and liberty. But yet I don't feel like that that means a lot for many of us because the reality is many of us, we've never been captive. Many of us have always had freedom where we live, we were born into a free country and we've never been prisoners. Maybe you have been put in jail for a temporary moment, but can you imagine being a prisoner for a long period of time, held against your will, having no choice of your own? Can you imagine that? And that's where people were. That's where the United States of America was, that we didn't have really any rights. And so, the Declaration of Independence came about. Uh, I'm standing in the memorial here in Belton, Missouri, the memorial for the World War II, World War I, um, Vietnam, the different wars that people fought. And behind me are the different um, statues and memories. It's an incredible, incredible place. And when I was looking here, um, just at the different bricks. They've got different bricks with names on them of uh, people and thinking, these people gave their lives for the freedom I have today. I just can't even hardly wrap my mind around that. And yet, I was listening to a story of a guy by the name of Vince. And Vince is was a prisoner of war, 197 years old when he recorded this video. And I want you to listen to the struggle that Vince went through when he was captured as an American. Listen to this video. I love what Vince said. Uh, did you catch it? The news reporter asked him, what did that feel like? And Vince said, when 18 to 20 guys come and say, you are free to go, what would you say? How would you feel? And you know, I was thinking about that when I was listening to that video, I was thinking, how would I feel? Because I've never been a prisoner of war. In war. But you know, the truth is, Vince has, and he, he lived it. For 18 months, he lived as a prisoner doing what they made him do with no hope. Can you imagine it? With no hope of ever returning home and thinking this might be the end. And behind me is the memorial for the prisoners of war here in Belton. I want you to see what this plaque says because it echoes the, Vince, the words of Vince. It says, the prisoner of war, your suffering as a prisoner of war can never be understood. Death might not have been easier and even welcome for you during your captivity. Your bravery and your courage continue to inspire. May your example of steadfastness never fade in our memories. And so as you're thinking about a prisoner of war, I wanna transition you and I wanna talk about the cry of freedom because it's not a new thing. The cry of freedom is not a new thing from the 1800s. The cry of freedom is not a new thing for Americans. The cry of freedom has been since human existence. But I wanna take you to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter five, 
verse 1. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Paul, who had been a prisoner himself, he wrote these words. Listen to what he said. He said, for freedom, Christ has set us free. I, I want to read it again, and I want, you to, I want you to read it with me. Here we go. For freedom, Christ has set us what? Free. Stand firm, therefore, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And so this weekend, as we celebrate the Declaration of Independence, as we celebrate the freedom that we have, and we, we thank those that gave their lives so that we could have this freedom, I want you to think about the freedom that we have. But not only should we thank those soldiers, those men and women who have given their lives, but most importantly, we should thank Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross over 2,000 years ago to give you and I freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from sin and the bondage of sin. Freedom from condemnation. Freedom from guilt. Freedom from hell. Freedom from being separated from God for eternity. I love the verse, and I know every, it seems like everybody knows the verse, but yet, so we make it commonplace, but yet it's so important. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he what? That he gave his only son. Why? So that we could be free. And for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him, what? Will not perish, but have eternal life. So Jesus came and he hung on the cross and he rose again on the third day so that you and I could have freedom. And that is the freedom that we get to celebrate this weekend. That is the freedom that you and I have in Christ. The only one that's going to hold you to bondage if you truly know Christ, if Christ is in you, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So if Christ is in me and I am in Christ, the only one that's going to hold me a prisoner of war is myself. And so I'm going to celebrate the freedom that I have in Christ. In Congress, July 4th of 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America was made official. And here's my big idea as I leave you today and this weekend, I want you to think about it. Daily declaring your freedom in Christ will keep you grounded in the cross. I mean, daily daily, every day getting up and saying, hey, I'm going to declare my freedom in Christ that because of what Jesus did on the cross and because he rose again on the third day, I have freedom. And listen to what Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. He said, for freedom Christ has set us free and stand firm. He said, stand firm. We've got to stand firm every day and say, I am going to declare my freedom in Christ. Christ. Listen to the big idea. Daily declaring your freedom in Christ will grant you, keep you grounded in the cross. And that's what I want. I, I know that's what you want, to stay grounded in the cross. I was talking to a friend this week that was really struggling. And um, in talking to them, um, they've made lots of money and now they're, they're just really struggling. And I said, hey, you know what I want to encourage you to do? I want to encourage you to write out a hundred things that you're grateful for. Because I don't know, I know that you don't have as much money right now as you have, and things look kind of bleak, but there's hope. And this individual sent me a hundred things that they're grateful for. You know what that does? When you do that, it recenters you. And so if you're getting discouraged and you feel like, man, I'm just a slave, you need to remind yourself that you're not a slave if you know Christ. Now, if you're watching this video and you say, I've never received Christ, I don't know who Christ is. If I've never asked Jesus to come into my life and forgive me of my sins, one of the greatest things you can do is surrender your life. Because when I surrender my life to Jesus, I get that freedom that he's talking about, right? Like I get the freedom of the cross. I get the freedom of him rising from the grave. I get his love, his grace, and his mercy. 
And so right now, where you said, maybe you're watching this in a coffee shop, maybe you're watching this at our fireworks stand, or you're watching this from home, I wanna give you an opportunity. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, I wanna challenge you. What's holding you back from asking Jesus to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins? I just want you to just bow your head. There's nothing spiritual about bowing your head except it's just gonna cut out all the distractions around you. And if you've never accepted Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. And the best that I know how I receive what you did on the cross over 2000 years ago. I receive eternal life. I receive the payment that you did on the cross and today, Jesus, I want you to make me one of your children. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for setting me free that I'm no longer a slave, but I'm free. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, if you truly believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you confess with your mouth, he'll come into your life. He'll forgive you of your sins and he'll make you a new person. And most importantly, the chains will fall off and he will set you free. And if you prayed that prayer, I would love for you to message us or you can email us even at hello at lifequest.church. Hello at lifequest.church. Or you can put it, if you feel comfortable, put it in the chat room right now and let us know that you prayed to receive Christ. If you are a believer today, let me challenge you. Live in your freedom. Live where Christ wants you to live. Again, I wanna go back to the big idea as I close today. Da daily declaring your freedom in Christ will keep you grounded in the cross. You know what else it'll do? It'll keep you grounded to where you don't live in condemnation, you don't live in guilt, but you live in the freedom. So let's go this weekend, how about it? Let's go and let's celebrate all that Christ has done for us and all that these men and women have sacrificed. And let's live that freedom because when other people see you live in that freedom, they're gonna say something's different about you and you get to share how they don't have to be prisoners anymore. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited about next week as we start a new series called Quantum Leadership. And we're gonna talk about leadership. You, I'm, I might not attend because I'm not a leader. No, no, you're gonna to wanna to attend because there's gonna be something for everybody next week, next Sunday at 9 a.m. or 11 in person or online. I'd love to have you join us. Hope to see you at the fireworks tent. God bless you guys. We'll see you later.